Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the art of pitching. Well, uh, pitching is a um, an extremely important element in public relations, and uh, to do it right uh, is really an art form. And to uh, there's a lot of good practices or best practices, and there's a lot of things that you shouldn't do to get coverage in various times of the day and various platforms and the incorporation of social media. Um, so we have a, a panel here of journalists and, a, and uh, public relations professionals. Uh, my name is Randy Zane. I'm, uh, I've been doing PR and communications uh, for many years. Uh, head of communications for Zip Davis, uh, worked at IBM. I was on the launch team for IBM's Watson. Um, I've worked in uh, you know, a startup recently, so uh, doing PR for quite a long time. So I'm gonna let uh, these folks introduce themselves. I'm Carrie Flynn, I'm a business reporter at Mashable. I cover the business of tech, so that's a lot of like tech giants like Apple and Google and Facebook and Twitter, all the things that you guys love to use. Um, I also cover startups sometimes. Um, my beat's really general, which means I get to cover really whatever I want, which is awesome. Um, and before that, I was at International Business Times, and before that, I was at the Huffington Post. Hi, I'm Nikki Mandel. I am the senior PR manager at Refinery29. Um, which means I handle all things PR, uh, communications internally and externally, um, events, speaking engagements, articles, pretty much anything Refinery does, I'm pushing it out into the world. Hi, I'm Lee Sheps, and I am a digital reporter with Inside Edition, and I am covering everything you're sharing on social media. So whatever's trending, whatever's going viral, that animal story you're doing, the breaking news story of the day, hard news to that funny proposal that your friend just posted on Facebook that's now going viral. And my background, I come from uh, national news and before that local news, and I've been all across the country reporting for different TV stations. So I've had my share of experiences working with PR professionals. And she's married to one of us, so. <laughs> It works out. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Kovitz, and I am the U.S. Uh, Managing Director for Consumer Media at Edelman. And um, we are uh, at Edelman kind of rethinking about the whole business. So Richard Edelman calls it uh, communications marketing, which is where brands and companies and uh, causes, they can't demand attention. They have to earn it. So you've sort of heard of, like, media relations being rebranded as earned media. So we have this thing where it's like, you know, earned centric and social by design. Everything we do, all the stories, all the campaigns, it has to not only, you know, be newsworthy, but it has to be something that you'd want to share with your friends and family and other people. Well, welcome. And uh, so I thought, you know, since we have an interesting mix of uh, journalists and uh, PR professionals, I thought we'd get a different perspective. It's kind of unique to get a perspective on the art of pitching here. So I thought I would start off questions with, our, with the journalists. So tell me, uh, Leanne, what elements do you like to see in a media pitch? This is a great question. So for me, I am always on the go. I turn six, about six stories a day. So the faster I get elements from PR teams, the better. So if you send me an email, the first thing I, I like to say is just make sure you know what our audience is for Inside Edition. We cover, um, the broadcast show covers a lot of uh, politics and entertainment and we, me working on the digital side, I'm always happy to pass that on to the show, but um, we're just part of the Inside Edition brand for digital and so, like I mentioned, we're covering anything trending or viral that you're gonna share and love and eat up. So. Something on a pitch in an email, no for my audience, and also have all those elements ready for me. All the photos I'm gonna use for my video that I'm gonna put together, all the pictures that I'm also gonna use, who the credits are for all those if I have to put a credit on. Um, is there someone I can interview on a FaceTime, on a Skype, on a Google Hangout, on a Facebook uh, video chat? What time are they available? Are they available right now? Because if you're gonna pitch me, I would love to have them right this second to do that interview. Because if they're not available for three days, I'm not, I'm, I'm not interested in the story anymore because you know, the, it's you know, too late at that point. Um, and then you know, on our digital side, we're also writing an article to accompany the video. So if there's quotes there for us to use, awesome. Or if there's, and something else that I like is that if we're talking about a, a specific person um, who's out there 
you know, changing the world and if there's a story we need, want to share about them. Um, are they, you know, can we, what was I trying to say? I don't know, we just, we just want to talk to them now. Are they available right now to speak? If they're not available for a few days, then it's just, you know, it's just really difficult. And we just like everything right there with our contact information. And then we also like to see, you know, um, kind of, in my opinion, you know, the PR teams are the middleman between the journalists and the subject we're talking about. If we can just talk with the subject and get all that information, um, and they can send us the photos, they can send us the video too, that's, that's also great. But the best scenario is that everything's in that email, right, in a downloadable link, and we just click, we know who the credits are, we know, um, and we have it right then and right there because we ain't waiting for anything. <laughs> And that's interesting you said, you know, everything right there, links or videos. So is it is a good a good practice, you know, Terry, is to, to you know, atta use attachments? Because sometimes it goes into the spam folder. So should you attach a photo or attach a video or send links to like a Tumblr account or something like that? What's what's the best practice in that? problem with attachments. I mean, I really, actually, I like Dropbox folders. Like, okay. people should just use more, like, cloud storage, honestly. As a tech reporter, right. I feel like I can, you know, be the expert in that. Um, so, but, no, I don't imagine, I totally agree with the fact that, like, if you're going to pitch me something for something right now, I expect, and you want it to be a part of a breaking news story, like, let's say the Yahoo hack that just happened last month. If you're, like, a cybersecurity expert and you want to be a voice in here, you tell me, okay, like, I'm going to have to hit this news very fast, and everyone else in media is going to hit this really fast. So if you want to be a part of this conversation, you're going to have to act as fast as I am. Um, which isn't like pressure. <laughs> it's just like understand what you're saying. Like provide as much as you can, um, and don't think that's a problem. But I guess on, uh, uh, to elaborate on that too, there are times when I just appreciate transparency in what you want out of me and what kind of I want out of you. You know, like, if you're writing me attachments, like, do you expect me to include this in a story? Like, if you're writing me a 10 minute video, do you want me to watch this video? Why am I watching this video? Are we working on a longer story together? Just really, what's the purpose behind it? Um, which I would, again, say that, like, that better be, like, the first three sentences maybe incorporated in the subject line of what you're sending me. And it's interesting you say that about a 10 minute video and walking you through it. So I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to the PR folks here and, and really how to, how do you target a reporter? How do you build that relationship so someone like Leah and Car Carrie could watch that 10 minute video? Hopefully it'll be shorter, or two or three minutes. But how do you target the right reporters to, and to do send your media pitch? How do you build that relationship? I, I think the first thing is you have to decide what's the story and then you have to think about you know, reading people's stories to make sure it's the right person for the story. The worst thing you know, is a misdirected pitch and it probably happens to you guys all day long and needs to go someplace else. And one thing that when we're you know, bringing people along and teaching them how to pitch, Nick Bilton who was at the New York Times and now he's at Vanity Fair, he said this very smart thing, you have to pitch like you tweet. And I think if you can't explain the story in the subject line, get, like back to the drawing board, you know? So I think that's really important. And I think if you don't like spend time looking at people's, the previous stories they've done or reading their Twitter or looking at their Snapchat or whatever, it's like, it's kind of on you, you know? That's, as I say to somebody, that's why they call it work, you know, <laughs> so. Yeah, and just to add to that, I um, I always try to think of what does their inbox look like and try to be respectful of that. I have the benefit of working at a media organization, so I sit right next to our editors and I try to get a sense of, like, if I'm pitching something out that they're working on, try to get a sense from them, like, what would catch their eye. Um, and what I've learned is keep it short, as Carrie said, if, like, and Lisa said, if you can't summarize it in the first sentence or the subject line, you're going to lose people's attention. Um, and I found it useful to sort of get the, what you're offering up front, if you have more to say, kind of like drop it below. Um, that way people know it's there, all the information is there if you need it. But if, if, even if I get an email that's like five block paragraphs, I immediately am like, I don't have time to read this right now. Um, and I assume most people feel that way. <laughs> and, and it's interesting you say that because you want know, to capture you know, reporters' attentions. How many, just on average, how many media pitches do you guys get? You know, I mean, it's just interesting to, to, for the audience to yell. I'm sure you get a lot. Carrie probably gets more than I do, but 
No one has my email address. <laughs> I honestly, I find my stories on my own, but if I do get pitches, they're from a job I had five years ago. And they're like, oh, come to Bonita Springs, Florida for this press conference. And I'm like, why are you emailing me? I work in New York. But um, so I really, right now, I'm not getting those pitches. And you know, for our, what we're looking for as far as human interest stories and stories about, um, you know, things that people are, you know, overcoming. And, um, you know, those are the types of stories that we're looking for. You know, stories about people is a, what we love. Um, but you probably get a million more. I get a million, and I think part of it's my own fault because I really put myself out there. Like, my Twitter has my email on it, and also my email is carrie at mashable.com, so it's very easy for all of you. Um, especially right now. Um, and I put my cell phone out there. So, you know, like like today, I like actually, like I was walking on the train and I got a phone call for a pitch and I was like, what? And I'm like, oh, it's my fault. You know, like I, <laughs> I like asked of this. Um, so, no, I mean, that's just, I think it's like a journalist to journalist thing. Like I honestly don't mind receiving pitches and having outreach and I manage that myself. Um, but yeah, I guess because of that though, I increase the competition. So therefore, like, to get through the noise that I created for myself, it's, it's harder. Um, but I guess from a, my perspective, it like, you know, I like the challenge of that. I like putting put more right. pressure. I have one other thing that I learned pretty early on in my career is understand who you're pitching. Get to know what titles mean at outlets. So you understand, like, if you're pitching a, a copy editor, they're probably not the one writing the story. They're checking for grammar errors. Um, so, you know, get more specific in your research and get to know them, look at their social media handles and, and figure out, are they the person that's going to write the story or assign the story or are they the photo researcher and they're going to delete it immediately or if you're lucky, pass it on. Um, and that will save you guys a lot of time. That's a, that's a very good point. You know, like from a TV perspective, you know, a lot of times you would go to the producer as opposed to the reporter itself. But Lisa, do you had a... Yeah, I, I think that um, it's also to think, think to not to think of just your brand, but to think of sort of, of trend stories. Um, we work for Campbell Soup, of all things, and they, um, for the last couple of years, have been licensing different characters from Disney and Marvel and from Lucasfilm. So the latest brand they have is for the Spider-Man, and so there's a, a commercial that they just put out where um, there's a there's a Spider-Man a, a kid in a Spider-Man costume and and driving sort of his mother, mother crazy and and all of a sudden when he when the child comes to the table and takes off the Spider-Man hood it's actually a little girl and so rather than just pitch the commercial we really took a step back and we looked at oh there's a little bit more girl power out there you know in, in between Ray from Star Wars and hashtag Where's Ray there weren't enough you know toys for that. Um, Campbell's had done a, uh, a commercial last year where it's two gay fathers feeding their child and it was sort of, Luke, I am your father. So we were able to sort of take a bigger step back and pitch that and we ended up in the Huffington Post, time.com, hit fix, where we were working on you guys, Mashable, we didn't get anybody there, but, but uh, no, I'm, it, I was pitching obviously the wrong people, but, but I think that, um, fail, hashtag fail, but, but, um, I think that if you don't sort of think like the way these guys think, it, it, the chances are it's not going to work and be respectful of the fact that they have a lot going on and help them do a little bit of the homework. So we even put in links to like some of the Ray, you know, the Ray toy stories. And I think right before, um, right before this Comic-Con, Lego announced that they were doing a line of DC, you know, uh, ver girl versions of favorite heroes. And I put that link in just because, you know, I'm trying to help the person do the homework and not to insult their intelligence, but to figure out this is a real trend, so. Right. So, now we talked about, you know, the, 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 a lot of things in media pitches, but I want to know how, how do you go about developing a media pitch? What goes into it? You know, is it, do you take it from a press release? Or do you, you know, do something around a new trend? So, Nikki, maybe, maybe you can tell us how you go out about what's the, how you strategize to do that. Sure. Well, from our perspective, it's just a, having a constant line into what the priorities are in the company. So, for instance, um, we are pitching out something probably as I speak, um, my team is, and it's a huge initiative that we have going on, um, a cross departmental initiative. and thus worthy of a huge PR push. Um, and it's interesting because we actually are creating a press release, sort of, but not even a full press release. It's 
or it's a hybrid of like a tip sheet and an announcement, um, and it's because it's for our conference. So um, there are a lot of elements that we would want reporters to know, the speakers, the panel, titles, all that kind of stuff. Um, and in going about that, we decided that was the best format, but the way that we're pitching it out is getting people's attention first, are you interested in that kind of thing, and sharing all of the details if they need it. Um, Am I answering your question you right? Are. Okay, so um, yeah, so I mean that's like a macro example and a micro example is I found out that one of our beauty writers has an exclusive interview um, with an actress that is launching today and do we want to pitch that out to you know have those quotes be picked up because that can become sort of a trend story too if she's talking about relevant topics. Um, so we kind of operate on the long lead and short lead of what we're working on at any given time. Lisa, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how long a media pitch should be? I know you said the subject line really t t yeah. says a lot. I mean, I mean, I think if you can try and get it to, you know, maybe like two, two paragraphs, that would be great. But, you know, and anything that's more complicated can be part of the follow-up. And I think it, you know, like, like what you know you were saying about Dropbox and all of that other stuff to put the content and I have this other trick now where I take the entire email even if it's short and I put it in plain text because the, the spam has gotten so you know the firewalls have gotten so huge right. you know if, even if I have to like pull out rather than hyperlink something I literally paste in the URL because it's going to get stuck you know in in the in the filter so you just have to like, and it's crazy that you even have to think like that, but given the volume that, you know, everybody's getting, you kind of have to do that. Great, um, so, uh, so I'm gonna throw it to you over there. Now, there are different, um, you know, pitches for different media platforms, you know, like TV, print, or digital. Do you, do you have to want to see different elements in the media pitch? I, I think every media outlet is looking for something different. You know, if you're pitching to CNN or Fox News, you're pitching a talking head who's going to speak on a specific topic that's relevant that day, um, and you don't necessarily need to provide them with B-roll because these networks already have a whole server full of you know, file footage that they'll throw over as B-roll. I'm sure you guys all know that term, right? B-roll? It's like our favorite word. Um, uh, for TV, reporters are great to pitch to if you need because every morning you have to go to a pitch meeting and the reporter has to pitch stories. And if you don't have, oh my gosh, if I didn't have a story in the meeting, I was like, you, I failed that day. So, and, and the story they wanted couldn't be already out there in the news, in the newspaper or someone else covering it. So it was like, someone help me, I need a story. So if you could pitch reporters first thing in the morning so that they ha and say that that person or um, thing you're talking about is, is ready to go that day, before deadline, you know, news news is at noon, news is at five for local television. You have it in the morning, great, then then that's an easy turn for a reporter and you're their best friend. Um, and then for me, for digital, I'm in at seven in the morning every day. So if you have something for me first thing, you know, that, yeah, maybe I can do it at like one if, you know, need be, but I'm, you know, I think we're, we're looking for something different. We're looking for that like wow video that's like gonna have a million shares, like Chewbacca mom, right? Oh my gosh, that was such an ordeal to get her. And we did, we got her on the phone by, at four o'clock that Friday. I got in at seven and it took us till four. Then I think she finally got a publicist or something to, to speak, <laughs> it took that all day. But for instance, like that's how I'm starting. I see that, I saw that video first thing and I, no one, had, everyone walked in um, that morning was like, what's Chewbacca mom? And I was like, this is it, we gotta do this story. And, it, and then we did it until four, and at that point, it was too late. And the day four was way too late. We needed it at 7.30. Does that sound that what you're looking so for? So, Kelly, when's the, when's the, when is there a bad time to, do, to send you a media pitch? You're on deadlines. I know there's different deadlines for print and digital reporters. I mean, yeah, but digital, or sorry, but digital, like, we, I'm, like, 24-hour reporter, especially as someone who covers tech companies. So, like, technically, I'm on West Coast time as well. So, like... I don't think in digital these days there's a bad time. I think it's important to realize what the reporter typically covers and also, like we talked about earlier, check their Twitter feed to make sure they're not somewhere. For instance, like I was just at a conference yesterday so and I just got a lot of pitches and I'm like, I cannot respond to you right now. And it was like urgent pitches. I'm like, if you just took a glance at my Twitter, my pinned tweet, you would have seen that I was busy. And two, like with, uh, I cover those tech giants and though they have company earnings reports every quarter. So like when it's that day of that company, I'm like, no, or like an iPhone release day, like don't bother pitching any other 
news that day because it is Apple's day or Google's day. So, so I think it's just important to be aware of, and I know it's, it's hard, obviously, but especially if you're at an agency where you have like 10 clients or more, it's hard to be aware of a specific industry like I cover. Um, but just try to put a little judgment into, into that, especially if you're going for like more of a personal outreach pitch. So Lisa, how do you cut through the noise if there is a Google day or an Apple day and you, your client wants to get in, has to do an announcement that day? How do you, how do you get Well, it? and I think, I mean, this has been a particularly challenging 17 months, you know. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> it'll be over in 27 days or whatever it is. Um, but, but so we've really started to think about more if it's, you know, and clients are very obsessed rightly or wrongly, like, we want to be on the Today Show, or we want to, and it's like, you know, we have really started to think it's more about, you know, places like Lee's and places like Mashable, that if you make enough noise in the digital space, the television networks, for instance, have people all the day long, they're just looking at what's trending, and then they want to make sure, like Lee said, to get that person on their air and on their, you know, on their channel. So we're a little bit more about like, let's blow something up socially first through the very good social chops that the digital, the born digital outlets like Mashable or the Huffington Post have. And then by, you know, and then you either are gonna end up in the Tonight Show monologue or you might end up, you know, the next day on a network morning show. And if something ha can live in a vertical like food or travel or kind of nerd culture like this Spider-Man soup thing was, it was like it doesn't need to be in a general place because you're competing against a million other things. During fashion week, don't do a fashion-oriented story. You know, like you know, during a hurricane, if you're a travel company, you want to explain in terms of cancellation fees or insurance, you don't want to start talking about a, planning a trip to the Caribbean. And it's so it's just trying to figure out, A, how do you not swim against the current, but swim with it, I guess. That's a great point. Do you have anything to add? Um, I would say, as Lisa was saying, it's important to understand the value in different placements. So social media is becoming hugely important, you know, on a certain level. If you can get on someone's Snapchat channel, you might be getting more eyeballs than on their website sometimes like that. So I think it's understanding the full landscape now and the power of social media. Um, and also understanding if you're, you know, let's say you're dealing in a client situation and, and all they want is the Today Show, like figure out why, you know, what are the goals and not just, you know, or all they want is print. Well, why do they want print if it's if it's a video story? Don't you want them to be able to click on it? Um, so I think it's, it's a lot of, um, managing expectations and really just digging into like what's going to create the most value for whatever you're pitching. Um, and sometimes it can be hard and tough love and you know you learn a lot and you get people say no but um, you know get creative with what you are setting your goals around um, and yeah. And, and I, I would just say like especially with refinery is that you know, we have, you know, clients who would like to be on their Snapchat, who would like to be doing the Facebook Live, you know, that's become like a very big thing so that if we're doing um, an event or we're doing like a press junkin for a celebrity, we are now putting aside a little space that's the Facebook Live area that will not be noisy, that will be lit properly so that, that if somebody wants to do that, they're in and out of that space and it's not like, oh, wait a minute, now we have to rechange everything. We're trying to really accommodate that because there are more eyeballs, I know, like on your stuff and Mashable's too, is that on the video side of it sometimes than even the text stories. It's really important. So, uh, Karen, you mentioned something about social media. So I'm, I'm very curious how you incorporate social media and work with PR folks. And, you know, you mentioned Twitter. But are there, I mean, do you use, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn? What, what's, what's the best platform to reach you in particular or in general? I mean, what, how do you use that, please? Yeah, I, I would say I've, I've mentioned Twitter multiple times. We've all mentioned Twitter multiple times, even though it's like a struggling, quote unquote, struggling company. Um, it is the best tool for the people on stage right now. Um, and just because I leave my um, direct messages open, so it's kind of like an email um, that's easier for me to digest on, on mobile. Um, so I would say that's the best. I would say that LinkedIn is like the worst for pitching, just like, just don't get lost in there. Uh, I think it's fine for connecting, um, but that just makes no sense to me. Um, I use Snapchat very heavily, but that's very private. Um, so so if, you're, if you're in on my Snapchat, congrats to you. 
Um, but I, and I also, I think Facebook, um, I, my page is verified in public, so that's becoming more of a tool for me, again, to, to message. Um, but again, I think Twitter's number one, especially. Just because you see most reporters these days are tweeting their own stories, they're tweeting what they're doing, they're being a part of a conversation. Um, I think it's the right way to, for you to really understand and get a grip of what, what that person's like and what they do. Okay. Leah, do you have I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I don't know. You could just email me. However, I, re I look at everything every five seconds. So, but, um, you know, obviously an email, I think, is the best um, pitch because, as I've already said, I don't get any emails. Although, although my email is, my email is, I know. I, I'm looking forward to reading all of them. Um, no, my email is public, but, uh, you know, and how we look for stories maybe is that on social media, Twitter has a trending thing, and um, so that's how you know we're looking for ideas. Facebook has that trending um, column where you can see what's trending, and you know I think Instagram has a little bit of it. So those are all you know. If if you have something on that, then we'll see it, and that'll be the news of the day for us. I have a question. So here's an interesting question. So I, I've worked for some major brands, and when you work for major brands, it's a little bit easier, you know, developing the pitch and working with reporters that get you. Lisa, can you give us an example or explain to the audience that if you have a lesser known brand, but that client is still, you know, has expectations of getting major coverage, how do you go about getting that brand attracted to the media? Uh, I mean, I, I hope that our journalist friends here would agree. This is about a really good story. It, you know, yes, you might have a big client, but it's, you know, there's a really, you know, you want to try and find, and, and I'm glad that Lee does the human interest stuff, because it is about the people involved. You know, it's a little less about the stuff and a little bit more about the people, which is probably explains why our previous panel of influencers, they're people, you know, and it's their reaction to it. So when it's a smaller company, you have to really kind of dig in and think about what makes the people here, whether they're developers or, you know, I work a lot in food, so if it's chefs or if it's farmers or, you know, they're, they're more interesting almost than the thing that's at the end. And think about what you like to read, you know, and it's like there's generally a person at the center of it. And um, uh, the guy who created 60 Minutes, is a man named Don Hewitt, he said, he said, the flood is the event and Noah is the story. And I always say, to, I always tell clients that because they said, this is really much more about your Noah's than it is about, you know, the car that you made. I mean, the car is, yes, if you're in automotive PR, the car is the story to the automotive press, but I wrote, once got a story for Ford about the guy that they hired to drift the cars, you know, on the test track, like in, in the Furious, the Fast and the Furious. And apparently as a kid, he was like arrested for speeding. And that was just part of his story. And it was a much more interesting story than, oh, here's the test track at Ford, you know. Right. I have a question. Nikki, you send a media pitch, this email reporter. How do you follow up with the reporter? You don't hear anything back. What's can you give the audience some best practices, you know, you know? Well, try to be that fine line between sweet and annoying. Um, I, no, I follow up on email. I'm, I'm limited with phone calls. I think that some reporters love phone calls. I know that you've said you like getting calls. I, um, I know that some of our writers don't love it as much. I think it's, it depends on the relationship with the person. So if you have an existing relationship and you feel comfortable picking up the phone, giving them a call, casual, just to say, I emailed you, I want to make sure you saw it. Um, I think that's okay, but I think cold calling sometimes can, you know, if you're calling a writer's cell phone in the middle of the day, and, you know, maybe check their Twitter and make sure they're not like in the middle of something. Um, and same, do, do the research, realize, okay, if you are following up, what else can you add that might make it relevant to them or make it new or eye-catching? Um, but again, it's, it's definitely a challenge in knowing that people are really busy and you want to make sure that you're crafting your pitch up front to be the most eye-catching. So here's what I do, and this is like the best trick of all time. You take the original email and you re-forward it, and in the subject line, it's like I always write, sorry to stalk you or sorry to be annoying. And because you've sort of used the power of guilt, you actually will get a response about 99% of the time. So I also, I have said in the past, which I, I often say when I'm developing relationships with reporters up front, is like, just give me a no. 
don't like you know even if you're it, like don't ignore me I'd rather just say up front if it's a yes great let's talk if it's a no tell me like instantly and I'll leave you alone for the rest of till the next time I pitch you um, but you know that yeah exactly I mean that way they're not like you know they're not ghosting on you at least you know that it's done and you move on I like your tips about checking their social media to see what they're doing to see if it's an appropriate time to call because a horror story on this, um, you know, in relation to the best practice of how to pitch, someone just kept calling me and emailing me every day and I'm like on deadline and I'm on like crunch time to get something on the air um, where I was at my last job at Fox News and working for digital and I can't, I, I can't talk to you. <laughs> it's like in the middle of the day, I'm on deadline, you know? And like, for instance, like local news too, you know, four o'clock is the mainstream newscast, four, five, six. If you're calling them at, at 4.45, no, that's terrible. No, or, or emailing, no, they're never gonna respond to you. They're in the, they gotta memorize their live shot, you know, um, what they're gonna say. And you know, if you just keep calling and hounding, I don't wanna do the story at that point because it's just like, because you know, I don't, not interested anymore. Same thing with like morning news producers. It's like you know that they're literally running around on set between the hours of seven and nine a.m. So definitely don't pitch them, even if you're like, I'm gonna get it out first thing in the day. But like then it's gonna be buried by everything else that they're also ignoring while they're running around. So try to get a sense of when they get back to their desk when they're done with that morning, that kind of thing. And maybe you'll get them right as they turn on their computer. Uh, so Terry, what should you never do? In what what you, don't you want? You don't want to see. This thing in the media day. I've, I've put a lot on, on the crowd here being like, I expect you to like research me and know me very well, um, which I know is asking a lot. But the worst is when I get a pitch that's like um, links to another article of something like a topic that I wrote about. Like where I'm like, oh, like didn't know if you catch the caught this thing and I don't know, like the Huffington Post. It's like, Nashville wrote that. I wrote that. Why would you not link to what I did? Like this really weird like approaching way where it's like, what do you, but you're like already catching me off foot too. And what we already talked about earlier, if you just don't know what I write about um, at all, like I cover tech. I don't cover, I don't know, like um, I've talked a lot about food. It's like, I don't really cover food. I mean, kind of, I could cover food tech, but you probably don't want me to write that story because I am just not your expert um, unless you want a non-expert story. Um, so, so I think just being, uh, you know, just understanding what, what I do and very forefront um, and just not, not mistakes on linking to other people. I, I want you to talk about your podcast. Podcast, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I, the business section of Math, we have a, a podcast and a Facebook Live, a weekly thing we have going on. We've talked about too, like kind of pitching to other platforms. Um, we, yeah, we have this podcast where we either talk, the editors and reporters talk amongst ourselves, or sometimes we feature guests. Um, and so if you don't really have any, I guess, hard news that you, or want like a text-based feature, but you think one of your clients could have a conversation with us, it's an awesome way, way in, and we're super into that. Um, and it's got a great title. Yeah, it's Biz Please. Yeah, it's Biz <laughs> Or Biz Please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think, and, and if you're interested in that too, like what we talked about earlier, like let me know what type of story you want. Like, so I would expect in the subject line of that email to say, guest on biz please, question mark, um, and maybe what, what your client um, does. Do we have time for a couple of questions in the audience? We do. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? Thanks for the great panel. Um, you mentioned, uh, or if you discuss pitching to reporters on Twitter. So uh, what would be a good way to establish a relationship with a reporter on Twitter when your first point of contact is Twitter and not email? I, I don't tend to pitch people. Uh, yeah, I don't use Twitter to pitch. I use Twitter to learn about the reporter. I know that a lot of reporters don't like that. Some do. but. Um, I guess, t so just tell me what you do and like why maybe you like, oh, saw you're at, like for instance, I was just at a conference or maybe just this. Like I honestly, I would not mind if any of you after this like slid into my DMs. It was like, hey, just went to this, I do this, um, let's chat soon. You know, just like very like, especially in 
direct messaging, just something very short and mm -hmm. simple to introduce yourself, I think is the, the whole point. It's just starting a conversation. Okay. And it's the type of thing too, like you're gonna get lost in my email in our like Twitter thread if we end up having conversations. Like right. I can scroll back and be like, oh yeah, I met her at this, like she was mm -hmm. great. And you just start having a conversation. Okay. I don't think you can really pitch something. You only have 140 characters to to pitch something, so I don't really think, you know, I I do know one organization that does tweet at me stories, but mm -hmm. they also email me the same thing, and they're tweeting at me, so they make sure that I saw the tweet. Right. And then I just can't always retweet them, because then I'd be, although they say, what, tweets do not equal endorsements or whatever, but then right. what am I supposed to do with it? Just retweet it? I mean, then that would be me promoting their, whatever they're saying, without me doing the actual story about it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Can you, can you come up to the mic? Lee and Carrie, do you respond positively to exclusive pitches? Do you like to, someone to say, I'm just giving this to you? Yes. <laughs> Who doesn't? Because then, you know, something we talked about, uh, you know, instead of just wanting to be on the Today Show, maybe they'll miss you and they'll come on us and then everyone's gonna be like, oh my God, what's that story on InsideEdition.com and then everyone is gonna pick it up but it'll be first on Inside Edition or you're, you know, Apple's releasing some product and, you know, you're the first to know about it. Everyone's gonna pick up your story, so. Yeah, reporters live by exclusives. I mean, I've talked about Twitter a lot. Like, you know, we'll all boast like, exclusive, colon, la. You know, like, and we expect everyone to freak out. Um, but yeah, no, I think, it's, I think it's important, but I think it's also very important to understand if you're gonna offer exclusive, like why are you offering me this exclusive and how sure. important is this news? Like is there like a reason you're giving me this exclusive? Is it actually not really a story? <laughs> but you're saying it's exclusive to make it a story? So, sure. so I just would put that, I, maybe that's just my, my Has to be skeptical real. mind. But um, no, I think exclusives are great. Just make sure like you know what the story is going into it. Okay, thanks. Great. Thank you. Um, I think uh, we have just a couple of minutes left, right? One more question? Any, oh. Hi. Um, so you mentioned a good point about knowing your um, contacts and their titles. So like when to pitch an editor versus a reporter, who assigns stories, who takes stories, who pitched the stories to the editor. What if you don't have a relationship with this magazine or this outlet and you're just trying to break in? Um, how do you kind of research that information? Because Cision, for example, doesn't always give you the most accurate information or the website doesn't list the full profile. So like, how do you go about that? I, I talk about this the same way as how I've got so many of my jobs. I just email random people and I say, hi, I'm Lee and I'm with whatever company, and um, these are the types of stories I'm pitching. I don't know anyone, if, if you can do me a huge favor, if there's any way you could pass this along to, get, um, to the appropriate person, or please let me know who the appropriate person is. If you're lucky, that nice person will respond to you with their email address, or CC you and be like, hey, so-and-so just emailed me, they're looking for this, wondering if this might be a good fit for your department. I just think just being nice and polite in an email saying, I'm looking for some help, can you help me? You know, people like to, be helpful to other people. Yeah, I call it tasteful stalking. So, <laughs> you know, you, you do your research, use LinkedIn, like we've all been saying, research is really important. Don't just like spray and hope it works. Um, but then, yeah, try to find a nice person. I mean, I personally run press at refinery29.com, which is really meant for people inbound saying we want to write about you, but I get a ton of publicists saying, I'm trying to do this story with so-and-so, can you direct me? And you know, I especially feel for these publicists, so I am always gonna forward it to the appropriate editor. Um, but yeah, it's just find, find a nice person. Not every outlet has a masthead, we don't. Mm -hmm. um, so the research is important in that element. Um, and yeah, hope for the best, don't give up. <laughs> Thanks. You just keep trying until someone answers you. And then I use LinkedIn a lot to find people's yeah. contact information. Well, thank you. Uh, I wanna thank, uh, Carrie, Nikki, Leah, and Lisa.